Since Matrix is open source, you're completely free to go and host your own instance of it, and the server being used on the main instance is completely free to use as well. But for a lot of people, if you just want to experience what Matrix is actually like, make your own room and, you know, maybe even bridge it over to Discord, Hosting yourself is going to be a little bit excessive, so what we're going to be looking at today is how to actually go and run a Matrix room and even how to bridge it over to Discord without having to host anything yourself. Now there is another way to do this which will get you your own home server and that is through EMS hosting. Now EMS hosting is the hosting provided by Matrix themselves. So they will spin up a home server for you and they'll manage it for you and basically that's your quote unquote home server that is managed by someone else. Now, you can probably work out what the problem in the long run doing this is going to be. And it's the same problem with just using any other home server that isn't yours. You're going to be subject to the terms of service that Matrix provides to you. And also because it's a managed server, you can't then just go and say, okay, I want to uninstall the Matrix home server and go and install a different home server. Or maybe you just want to repurpose the VPS for something else and, you know, not have a Matrix server on there. So personally, I don't like the idea of EMS hosting, but it is an option for people who actually want their own home server. When we get to creating rooms and communities, I will be using the main Matrix client element. And that's because that's the one I know how to use. So if you're using something else, I can't really help you there. So the first thing we need to do is decide on which home server we actually want to use. So if you're just going to be temporarily hosting it here, there's no reason why you can't just go and use matrix.org and then when you actually want to host something yourself, you can use another instance. But if you want to decide on a different instance, then there are lists like this one right here, which basically will give you a list of, you know, the matrix servers that are available for public sign up and what those matrix servers are actually used for. So this one right here is a matrix server hosted by a computer science student in France. So if you want to use that one, hey, that one's there as well. And there's plenty of other lists available like this one here and this one here as well. So if we have a look through this here, as we can see, there's a bunch of different servers available and it will show you where all of them are actually hosted. So let's say you wanted one that was in Australia, for example. So we have this one here, which is Perth Chat which is Australia's first one gigabit server. So pick a server that sounds interesting, go read their terms of service. A lot of them have websites attached as well as the home service. So they'll generally have some set of rules to actually using it. Obviously, if you care about decentralization, picking something that isn't the main matrix instance is going to be better. But because this is going to be a temporary solution, it doesn't really matter that much. Now, once you've decided on your home server, what you need to do is go and open up your element client, whether that's in the web or you have the desktop one installed. Now, I don't know how to use the Android one or the iOS one, so I can't really help you there either. So if you're using the main matrix instance, so matrix.org, what you need to do is just make an account. That's all you need to do. If you're using something different though, click on the change button here and then it will say what is the home server URL. So as we'll notice over here, so if we go look at matrix-client, the main matrix instance, that is the URL for it right there. So if you want to go and use something different, basically just take the URL from this column right here. So let's say you wanted to use something like, I don't know, the systemtest.tk. What you would do is take that, you would go and put it in here and then go click next, and it should prompt you to actually make an account on that instance. If you already have an account on the instance, then obviously go and sign into it. If you don't though, then just go to create account and go from there. Now, when you're creating your account, it will give you some keys. Make sure you save your keys because you won't be able to log back in if you try to log in from somewhere different if you don't have them. At least if you care about being able to read your encrypted messages. So now that we're logged in, what we need to do is go click this plus right here. So this is going to give us a prompt to create a new room or explore the public room. So we're just going to click create new room. And what we can do here is give it a name. So a name is basically the same thing as a channel name inside a Discord. This can be changed whenever you want to. So for now, I'm just going to call this uh, test room. And then we have the topic. So the topic is the same thing as a channel description in Discord. So let's just say this is a test room for a video. And if we go and make this public, then anyone will be able to join it from the room browser. But for now, we're just going to keep it private. This can always be changed later. Now, something that can't be changed later is the end-to-end -end encryption. As you can see here, you can't disable it later. Bridges and most bots won't work. So... If you want to bridge the room, make sure this is set to no. 
And the last thing we have is under advanced. So if you just want people to be able to join from only the home server you're on, then go and set this to yes. This really is only useful if you're trying to say, run a matrix server for a business and you just want people at the business to be able to join. If you just want a general room where if you share the link to it, you want people to be able to join it, then make sure this is set to no as well. Now, one thing to note about the encryption is once bridges actually do work with it, I still wouldn't recommend using an encrypted room with a bridge because once you actually bridge to something like, say, Discord, it won't be encrypted anymore, even if it says it's encrypted on Matrix because Discord isn't end-to-end -end encrypted. So anyone that knows about the Discord server knows about all of the messages that are supposed to be encrypted on Matrix. Only use encryption when you're chatting with people on Matrix. Now let's just go and create the room. So give that a second, it will slowly go and make it. And as we can see, we now have the new test room. So this should be somewhere in my list here, right down the bottom here. I'm not gonna get into room management today. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video on that instead. So now we can go and create a community. Now community is very basic right now. So what it is, is basically just a grouping of rooms. So this is the community I have right now. There'll be a link to it in the description if you wanna join it. I can't do things like, say, you know, ban someone from all of the rooms in the community from just one single command or do any sort of moderation like that. So it's pretty much just to say, hey, all of these rooms are associated together. But in the future, as the service improves, hopefully we do get something like that. So if we want to go and make the community now, what we need to do is click this button right here. And this will take you to another page with a create a new community button. So from here, what we can do is go and give the community a name. So let's just say test community. And it's fine to have spaces in this name. Doesn't really matter. There are some special characters that won't be allowed. But if you try to use them, it will complain about them. So... The next thing we need is to give the community an ID. So like with the URL, you can't have a space in this. And this ID will actually be used to determine the URL for the actual community. So let's say test community. And obviously, like a URL, it does have to be unique. So if we try to make this now, as we can see, there is already one with that name. So let's just add a bunch of numbers to it because I don't really care right now. If we create this, as we will see, give it a moment. Now we have this community actually made. And from here, if we go and click the add rooms to this community button, this will then let us actually add any of the rooms that we're currently in. So it can be something in another community, it can be a public server, or it can be one that you've actually gone and made yourself. So let's just say the test room, and we have it right here. So let's just click that one and just add to this community and give it a moment. As we can see, now that's in this community. And from here, if we go and click the add rooms to this community button, this will then let us actually add any of the rooms that we're currently in. So it can be something in another community, it can be a public server, or it can be one that you've actually gone and made yourself. So let's just say the test room, and we have it right here. So let's just click that one and just add to this community and give it a moment. As we can see, now that's in this community. And if you don't care about having the Discord bridge, this is literally all you need to do. So what you can do right now is go click this button in the top right hand corner here. This will give you a link to actually share the community. If someone clicks that link, it will then prompt them to actually join it. Now, one thing to note is communities only properly work on the element client. So if they're using something else, you'll also want to share the rooms to them directly. But if you're just testing now, you probably still have some friends who refuse to leave Discord so setting up the bridge might be a really good idea. Now, you can go and host this yourself, but because this is a video about doing everything without hosting it, someone actually has gone and publicly hosted it on a website called t2bot.io. So there's going to be a Discord bot and there's going to be a Matrix bot, and basically it's going to share the stuff between them. Is that technically against the Discord Terms of Service? I don't know. It probably is. You are self-botting, but you're also botting for other people as well. I don't really know what the deal is there, but if you want to go and move over to Matrix, you probably don't really care about the Discord Terms of Service anyway. So the first thing we need to do is go and invite this bot to our Matrix room. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier is every single room that you want to bridge, you will have to bridge individually. You can't just go and bridge the entire community. Maybe one day you will be able to do that. So if this is a new room, what you can do is click invite to this room right here, or if it's got messages in it, you won't be able to see this anymore. So go over to the right hand side here, click on the I, and then you'll see invite to this room. And what you can do is just go and put in the Discord bridge link and click invite and give that just a moment. And you'll notice the bridge 
is going to join the room and there we go. And then assuming you already have a channel over on Discord that you want to bridge, like let's say on this server I just made two seconds ago, what you can do is go and click this link right here and then invite it to your Discord server. So give that a second and then select the correct server. So in this case, it's going to be Omega's server. Click continue, give it all of the permissions that it wants to have and then click authorize. And then if we give that a second, obviously click I am a human, it should go and actually have that bot on the server. So back over on Matrix, what we need to do is run the command discord bridge, and then we need the server ID and the channel ID as well. So the way we get the channel ID and the server ID is fairly simple. So if we go over to the web discord client, when you click on any channel in discord, what you'll notice is because it's a single page application, what it's going to do is actually go and modify your URL. So what we have here right after the slash after channels, this is the server ID. So if we go and take this ID here and go and paste it in the server ID spot, and then we take the next ID after the next slash, that is going to be the channel ID. So if we go and take that one and replace the channel ID with that, and if we go and run this command, it should now go and give us a prompt over on Discord. So it took about two minutes for that request to come in. So what it's doing is asking the guild administrators to actually make this bridge. So when you actually want to make a matrix bridge, you do need to have permission to actually set up webhooks. If you don't, then you won't actually be able to do so. So in my case, I'm the only person on the server. So that by default makes me the administrator. If we go and run uh, exclamation mark matrix approve, that will then approve the bridge. And as we can see, it should be working now. Over on this side, it has bridged the room. If I go and send a message, so just say message, as we're going to see over on Matrix, it will invite me to the room, and then the message is here. If we go and send a, another message from this side, so let's just say another message, and if we give that a moment, it should go and bridge that back over to Discord. But I have noticed from time to time the Matrix to Discord bridging is a little bit slower than the Discord to Matrix bridging. I'm not really sure what the deal is there. It might have a problem with the rate limiting that Discord does. It might be a problem with the hosting of the bot. I'm not entirely sure. Because I'm not actually hosting this myself, I can't go and actually look in to see what's actually happening. Now, it took about a minute for that message to be bridged across, but when you're paying literally nothing to do it, you sort of have to accept some limitations. So there are plenty of issues with relying on these publicly hosted solutions, but if all you want to do is try out Matrix, they're going to be perfectly fine as temporary solutions. But once you've decided, hey, I actually want to go and host a home server myself and actually host the Discord bridge myself, maybe you should try out something like Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or a personal VPN, you know there's going to be one that fits you. Going forward, I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone regardless of your plan size. So right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Before I go, I'd like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald Corbinian, Andrew Nathan, David Montes, I will, Chico Bento, Joseph Mitchell, Peter D, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you want to support me, I'll them links down below to my subscribe star, Patreon, LibrePay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute. If you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.